Talking to some of my students, I sometimes get the question asked, why is the API we have to use so complex? My first answer is, hey, don't worry about it. The API is complex because it is used to build the complete identity manager, but what you will need in your projects should be less than 20% of the complete API. My second answer is, hey guys, think what you like to reach. You like with the API to extend your product in a way that you implement new features. And in the same way that our developers was using the API to create the whole product to solve specific scenarios, if you like to solve other scenarios we was not taken care of because they are very customer specific, then you need something which allows you that. It is like Lego and Duplo. If you get asked to build, for example, a wonderful and detailed house somewhere and you have the choice to use Duplo or Lego, you will easily use Lego, especially because here are all the bricks in that could be used to create something really nice. If you have to use Duplo, which is the more simple version of a Lego, then you will create a more simple solution and that will not look like that nice than the Lego solution looks like. We don't like to forget that from a product perspective, beside the installation, which is all the time necessary if you want to do something with Identity Manager, always in the first place should be the configuration of standard features. And then only if the configuration of standard features don't solve your problem, then you should think about the customization. We like as well to say, if we think about the customization part, that there are two different customization flavors. First of all, there is the simple implementation. That is like changing processes or modifying templates or tasks or smaller code snippets just to reach a goal or to modify a little bit the standard technology to adapt the solution to the customer. The solution to the customer. The second part of the story then, it's the development of features. And the development of features is something that could very easily become very complex and therefore a full-blown API is. But again, even such development will not be done by business people. This will be done by super identity management experts who exactly know what they like to do. Last but not least, I like to say that our API description we have an Identity Manager. It's based on a general understanding of the customization language, which is SQL or VB.NET. And talking about the API, we are talking about VB.NET. And with that, I like you now to show some ways to get more information about the API as it exists in the Identity Manager. To start with the API in Identity Manager, we assume that you are experienced with coding. That means you know something about SQL and you know something about VB.NET or another programming language. With the help of that, we suggest that to learn to work with the One Identity Manager API, the easiest way is just to look into samples. You can see in Designer here our system library and in the system library there are a bunch of scripts and these scripts will help you to understand how the API could be used. The same thing exists as well for templates. If you look into your schema, you will easily find columns with templates, like for example, the SEM account name. And here you will find how to use the API again, especially here for templates in difference to the scripts where more global exercises are just solved. The same exists as well for the processes, because if you look into processes and for example here into the parameters, you will find a lot of samples as well. So that means learning from samples is one of the first things you should do if you like to start with Identity Manager. Learning from samples means as well to use the script SDK. Please remember we have a script SDK, which is on your setup DVD. And this script SDK comes with a lot of samples and these samples could be used as well together with the samples in the database. This should be a huge bunch of code snippets could be used as templates for your development. Besides using templates, you can as well use the standard functionalities, for example, of a Visual Studio. You can step into Visual Studio and in Visual Studio, you can use the object browser. To use the object browser, you have to select something you are interested in, for example, the query object. And with Shift F2, context sensitive, the query object will be 
shown in the object browser and now you can start explore different methods and property you can use for that specific query object. That means depending on where you are and what you select, you will get here some summaries or some parameter descriptions or something other else according to the selected specific query object. And you can as well open here in the object browser sometimes the different classes and find defined subclasses who may lead to some solutions as well. An object browser is something what developers love to use, especially because they get an idea how the complete object model looks like. On the more documentation side of things, you will find something like manuals. For example, there's the one identity manual, the configuration manual. And in this configuration manual, you will find, for example, a lot of code snippets as well, like you can see them here on the screen. And of course, you will find these manuals as well in the web where it is sometimes easier to search something just over all the versions of the manual they exist. For more detailed questions, you will find answers in communities like Connect One Identity or the Standard Quest community, where a lot of questions get answered and you will find sometimes code samples depending on the type of question you are looking for. Last but not least, we don't want to forget that in any project, there should be a project documentation, especially if the project runs a while. And in such a project documentation, typically you should as well find articles for specific feature implementations happens in that specific project. For example, if I step here into my feature documentation of my training environment, then you can find here something, for example, about a role structure and sometimes if that has something to do with the implementation, then you will find here as well code snippets and other stuff that could be of interest. You see, there are many places where you can find information and it's up to you to just to go there and to get whatever you like. Another way to get something out of the database that means to use something like a script SDK is to use SQL. As you can see here is SQL. You can find that in object browser, by the way, as well. This is a standard SQL tool. And with that SQL tool, I'm connected to my One Identity Manager database. What I do here is I'm searching dialog scripts, which are the scripts in Identity Manager, the templates, the format scripts, or maybe the methods, which are tasks. I'm searching all of these fields for a specific code type. As you can see here, the SQL formatter or here comparison, whatever. If I do that and if I turn on that my output goes directly into text, then the system will return me all the scripts where that stuff is used. For example, here I'm searching for comparison and you can see here is, for example, a good example for a comparison in a SQL formatter. And this is the way how I can get code templates out of existing scripts. But to be honest, this is something if you exactly know what you are searching for, but you cannot remember the exact syntax.